We're Brian, Marisha, and Carlos. We love traveling in our 4x4 Sprinter and sharing our adventures. The good and the not so good. In this series, we tackle the Arizona Peace Trail. So come along for the ride. Adventures Calling. Welcome to the Arizona Peace Trail, the ultimate off-road adventure through Western Arizona. The iconic OHV trail system utilizes existing trails, track, and dirt roads. The almost 700 mile loop has 34 segments. We're here to put the Arizona Peace Trail to the test to see just how accessible it is for a 4x4 van. The first half of our day, shown in last week's episode, proved to be pretty challenging as we navigated a narrow, sometimes steep dirt road filled with road boulders that we dubbed Puckerworthy. It's a puckerer. It's a pucker. <laughs> just... just look over and it just, it just goes yep. forever. Yep. It's amazing and cool, but it... I like this. This is nice right here. This is nice. There's some gut, some jeeps down there at that mine, like checking out that mine. They're probably look go, looking up going, is that an Amazon guy? Is that a fan? <laughs> Deliver an Amazon packages? <laughs> Ooh, this is oh, fun. Beautiful scene though. It is, it is a beautiful scene. It's Switch cool. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Switchbacks going down is beautiful. It's the most glorious sight we've ever seen. <laughs> it's very snaky too. <clears throat> I'll take the snakies all day long rather than just straight, straight downs. This was a little sketch. I told him it was fine. I mean, like, seriously? I have full confidence in his driving skills. Let's see if we can go see that mine. Hopefully. Wowie. I honestly think this might have rolled. It had to have. The whole bottom's buckled in. I'm trying to figure out another way it would get so crunched, like the bottom. Look, it's something like just tore up that too. That's weird. That's just really weird. Three cars down in here. There's something buried right there. Looks like a seat. There's a barrel. Looks like a landslide or a flash flood kind of thing. The underside of the frame right there. Yeah. Yeah, this car right here is completely upside down. This one's still in pretty good shape. Mm. I've been down here looking at this over the last freaking hundred years. Gear and stuff? Yeah, it's a cool one. Dude, that's nuts. They're coming back down. Yeah, this is huge mine. Q, the Maurice giving you a history lesson on this place though. Ooh, okay. The Boreana Mine was in operation from 1915 to 1980, having its heyday in 1918 when it was the largest producer of tungsten in Arizona. Throughout its time, it produced tungsten, gold, silver, and copper. Ooh, the door's crazy. Go in there. Let's go <laughs> check it out. Wow, these mines are awesome. This one is interesting. There's so much concrete. It's steel.
This is what all the haunted places sound like though. I'm sure it's haunted. So cool. Oh yeah, he's right behind this. Yeah, and then another guy kind of took off a little bit. The yeah. school's over there on the other end. There's guy, he's right there. And yeah, the natural. Goldfish in here. Over 30 years. Yeah, so supposedly they've been here for over 30 years. Living the dream. Okay, so the story is that the mine was so long and deep that it was no longer feasible to pump it dry for mining. It filled with water and has a constant overflow that now runs out of the mouth and forms a year-round pond. At some point, somebody decided to dump some goldfish in there where they have continued to survive and reproduce ever since. So we've been a little off with our segments as we've been talking to you guys. At the mine, we just finished section four. And this whole time we thought we were still on section two, which is good because we're further along than we thought we were. And we are now on section five, which is from the mine the rest of the way down. So it kind of overlap a little bit, but um, yeah. Well, mine is awesome. Yeah. Have lunch there. And Check out the goldfish. Around goldfish and there's a lot of structures and remnants of structures tons of cars from the 20s i think it's worth uh planning a little time to like explore around especially if you have kids if i were a kid i've been like all over that yeah mildly dangerous though yeah <laughs> older kids a lot of nails <laughs> so we are going to finish off section five see where we end up it's three o'clock said we didn't want to drive really long days this time see where we end up at the end if there's a camp, place to camp. Uh, you have about 10 inches. Uh, okay, good. You got about six inches. All right, maybe that's the section they meant. That would be fine. I'll take I it. I hope it is. I know. This gives you an idea of just another landscape shot really close though and the, the variety of cactus and rocks, the color of the rocks, the mountains. place to camp for the night in search of campsites yes. and our only goal is not to be in a dry riverbed there's a lake reservoir around here that they release water in from time to time and we have not been able to find a schedule for that at nope. all nope you're supposed to have a, they're supposed to have like a schedule of when they might do it but so anyway when it comes to uh, dry riverbeds and whatnot even though it's really arid out here I don't think it's wise to be camping in any riverbeds nope. close to that lake. Nope, nope. So be aware of that if you do the trail, though. And this is what we're working with to find a place to camp. Really cool area. Just need to find some sort of pull-off out here where we can sleep. It's cool. We like Joshua trees, Maurice. I do love Joshua tree. I love desert landscape in general. That's because you're a mega YouTube fan. I love it. I'm not a YouTube fan. That's right, you don't like YouTube. Don't hate me, I think U2, the band, is highly overrated. Easy the Marie. <laughs> They're overrated. No. I like Sunday Bloody Sunday. Maybe that and one's good. there's one other one. That's a little more punk rock, that's Where why. the streets have no name, that's the other one I like. What about the one they played on Friends? I don't when remember which one They were on a break. I don't, I don't remember which one that is, but what? maybe I like it, I don't know. I'm just saying. The hype is is hype. It's just it's just hype. It's just hype. But you do like Joshua trees. I love Joshua trees. Okay. Marie's is the gate master. Let's see what kind of style she has. Oh, she's fighting it a little bit with the cattle cattle grate. Oh, nice. That was smooth. That was a smooth one. Let's see if we can get up and over this thing. Though. This is a little, 
kind of a gnarly one. I know. How are we looking? You're good. Good style points on that one, Maurice. <laughs> yeah. It's a little wonky, but I got it. Coming up. Back in. Yeah, this is kind of a legit Tequila, my lady. Dude, check out this Dr. Seuss world that we're living in today. So cool being here live. Like, ridiculous with the rock formations. And like maybe looking this way with the sun on it, give you a, a better shot. These things are wicked. These things are wicked. Yeah, we don't want anything to do with that. Oh, this guy's boots on. He's got his hiking boots on. Yeah, where is he? Look at him. He's pro with the boots now. Yeah. They smell like Klaus feet, which is funny. It was a rough start. Hi, bud. Watch out for the cacatuses. For our little for car, uh, Klaus. A little for Klaus. Baja vibes. Where are you going, bud? Prancy. Place is incredible. Yeah. We are going to enjoy our evening and our tequilas celebrate today <laughs> legit today was mildly stressful so this spot right here you guys are gonna have to wait till tomorrow we will uh good boy pick you guys up in the morning yeah we will we'll see you in the morning Good morning from our beautiful campsite number two, our gorgeous, gorgeous view. This is what we see right out of our door. Carlos is taking a pee right here. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Wait for me. Carlos. <laughs> That's a monster. That's what we call a giant in the Joshua Tree community. <laughs> Even if you're not a U2 fan. U2, the band, is highly overrated. <laughs> dark. It is a pretty big one. The trunk is massive. Look at it. So the trunk of it is literally bark. But you don't think of when you deal with cactus all that much if you're not around them or familiar with them. And then those are pokey. And not these. Nice, like palm trees. They're very pokey. Dude, the end of them. Come here, bud. Good boy. Carlos hasn't... He hasn't yet discovered donkey poop. Pretty surprised. His palate is way more advanced than that. <laughs> He's like, He's like no. He likes the wild forest animal poop much yeah. more than He's the wild go. desert animal poop. <laughs> not donkey, though. No, he's not no a donkey. donkey poop. <laughs> Very surprised, though. We're heading for a walk this morning. Get moving a little bit before we spend the day on maybe another potential stressful day. Are you talking about potentials? Potential stressful days, I said. Oh. So we, based on the atlas. Some mixed information. Yeah, the atlas is telling us that Today's section is an M1. M2. Hey, Carlos. Hey, good boy. <laughs> Chasing a deer and he comes back? What happened? Did you run into a cactus? All right, that wasn't a cactus, that was a bush. But now he's all excited. He listened, which is awesome. Our, all our training is starting to come into play. Whoa. Anyway, Brian. Uh, so yeah, M2 is the max that we even consider going on. That's moderate too. Which sounds kind of wussy, but the M3s and D1, 2, rock crawling. That's way more rock crawling, yeah, yeah. So you couldn't even use like a lifted Jeep on that. That would have to be like a rock crawler type vehicle. So the moderates are going to be your 4x4s and footers and stuff. But So we have one source, which is the Atlas. The second source also has ratings, which is the GPX files and they're contradicting. One says M2 and one says M1. Yeah. So it, that's our conundrum. 
Yeah, so we figured we're going to just stay going off the Atlas because they're the ones who created the trails and assume it's an M1. And if we start to run into things that look more like an M2, then we'll probably turn around if there's a place to turn around, so. So when you get in the mountainous areas, those roads get narrow. They don't give you a lot of optionality to go around things. Mm -mm. They get steep at times. And then if you have big rocks and steep, you can imagine that would be challenging. So if it were somewhere flat, I wouldn't be quite as concerned about M1 versus two, but if being that it's in, going through elevation and like the, the mountains. Yep. So we'll, uh, we're gonna walk, take Carlos for a, a walk attempt to. He's already got his exercise. He's chased a deer. <laughs> for 30 seconds <laughs> and we will uh we'll pick you guys up on the trail it was a nice slow morning but it's time to pack up our campsite and hit the road again try not to run over any bushes he, he nicked one but it was a dead one all right we always try and leave the landscape exactly how we found it. Put our divots back, we put our holes back, our mounds back. This is awesome. We turned around right there. Did a great job. Cleaned up all the tire tracks. And <laughs> this is our road. <laughs> could have literally, you could have literally just backed right here and then left. <laughs> Can't win them all. We're on top of things here. <laughs> <laughs> How we made it this far? I don't know. <laughs> All right, so quick update, by the way, on our walk. My birthday's in April, April 16th. Mine's October 18th. You guys just missed it, but feel mm. free to send stuff anyway. They're, they're late than never. Yeah, I'll, I'll take it any any time in the quarter. Um, we decided on our walk that because we had conflicting information. It's a very emotional decision. It was. It is a little bit. We don't like skipping stuff, but we're probably, actually we are taking the alternate route and skipping section five because of the conflicting information, because we're seeing M1 and because we're seeing M2. Just based on what we dealt with yesterday, if it happens to be an M2 and it's something we can't get over, there was miles of places where you couldn't turn around and if you, and if there was even sections even close to what we did yesterday and we have to back down it, it would be bad. On the Atlas, it puts little red triangles where there can be challenging areas and they were on the switchbacks at that higher elevation. So what I'm picturing is a really sharp switchback going into a steep incline that has some off camber rocks potentially. And that's where the, probably the debate lies on whether it's an M1 or an M2 based on two areas in the switchbacks. And yeah. That is 75% way the way through the trail and the trail's 30 miles long. <laughs> so if we hit something and we can turn around, we'd have to backtrack over 20 miles I, or we'd be caught in a situation where we can't turn around, maybe forced to do it. And that could be dangerous to us and, and to the van. You could, yeah, you could hurt the van potentially. It'd more be dangerous for Brian because in those situations, I usually get out and I take the dog with me. Yeah, just leave me to see what happens. Good she luck, wants buddy. to make sure she catches it on film. Good luck, Whatever. buddy. Keep on keeping on. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we are going to do the alternate route. Um, still on the trail, just choosing the easier, safer option. Spit sunflower seeds are better, we already, hands down. We already had this debate yesterday. Do you prefer David sunflower seeds or <laughs> spits? <laughs> Comments, please. Mm, I'm saying spits. Anyway. Spits for sure, that's my <laughs> choice. We'll see you when we pick back up on section seven. <laughs> Jesus, section seven. Join us next week when we officially start day two and the challenges continue to build. See you next time. Make sure you like and subscribe so you don't miss a thing. Adventure is calling.